Students at the world-famous academy linked to the Bolshoi Ballet. The teenage dancers have all their lessons taught in Russian. Mm, there's also another big lesson for them. No pain, no gain. Our Moscow correspondent Daniel Sanford went along to see what it takes if you want to be the best. It is quite simply the toughest place in the world to learn to dance. Natalie Carter and Hayley Stobo are just 18 and 17 years old and put their bodies through agony every day. Learning to dance here is absolutely out of this world. It's nothing I've ever experienced ever. My ballet teacher has made me find muscles in my body that I never knew existed. And for the first time, there are three British students at the Bolshoi Academy. Daniel Dolan from Widnes in Cheshire makes up the group, who are now firm friends. I was invited to spend a day watching their lessons and discovered that Daniel came top of his dance class last year. At times you feel like you just want to give up and you don't want to go any further and you're, you're very tired and that's what I think makes the difference between some of the world's best ballet dancers and just average dancers. We're taught to go through and push the boundaries and go through our limits, go past when we're tired, work harder, push, make ourselves stronger and I think that's what I'm taught to do and it works. I've never improved so much in my life. All the lessons at the academy are in Russian, so first the three British teenagers have had to learn one of the hardest languages in the world. The two girls have wrestled with homesickness as well as the Russian, temperatures of minus 20 degrees centigrade and the tired muscles. My legs are really sore today. Yeah, you're so tight. <laughs> But then coming back this year, September 2010, as soon as I landed, whereas last year I landed, I panicked, I cried. This year I landed and I caught Dan's eye and we just started smiling at each other because we were back and we were home. And this is now where we feel comfortable. Just getting into the Bolshoi Academy is an achievement. To do well here opens doors to dance companies everywhere. And the three British teenagers' ambitions have no limits. They aim to be among the leading ballet dancers in the world. Daniel Sanford, BBC News, Moscow. Well, well those stretches, though. <laughs> they're quite amazing. Twinge in my back just looking at them. <laughs> Natalie Carter's mum, Sue, is here with us now. Um, clearly, they're inspirational children, these. Um, let's start at the beginning. How did she get chosen to go there in the first place? Um, Gypsy Booth is the school that she was at. <clears throat> actually belongs to Arbata, which is the Association of Russian Ballet. Right. And they hold master classes. And Svetlana, who was a former prima ballerina at the Bolshoi, came over, gave a master class, and said at the end of the class, I think Natalie ought to submit a DVD. We didn't think anything of it really, and um, we did. We, we submitted to the amateur DVD, and mm. as I can say, the rest is history. You must be terribly proud. I am proud, yes. Apprehensive, but very proud. <laughs> and I understand she um, not only did um, her friend come top of his class, she what came top of her class last yeah. year? Yeah, she got top grades, and she got, they got, she gave her a five plus for one of them because. Um, she was so good at um, character, I think it was. Put it's, a, it's a huge challenge for them. One, to, to be abroad. Two, to, to be at such an exceptional school. And then three, to learn everything in Russian. Yeah. I mean, that's an yeah. enormous task. It's a big challenge, but Natalie rises to a challenge. Dan rose to a challenge, and I'm sure Hayley will pick up the Russian it soon. It's early stages for Hayley, and, and she's panicking a little over the Russian, but she, she, it, will, it will soon click. It took about four months for Natalie to actually click the lang language. I mean, because it is a very difficult language. They, so they had ballet classes in yeah. Russian, and do they learn what uh, education as well? To have a in the mornings, lessons? they have about two hours of Russian, um, and then they have their ballet lessons come um, early afternoon and okay. into the evening. So, and yeah. once they have completed, the, um, how long does the training go on for? It's three years. They're all on a three-year course. What happens after that? Basically, in the third year, they will then um, audition for ballet companies, and hopefully, they will all um, get, get a role so with a ballet company. Could they get into the Bolshoi? Um, mostly not the Bolshoi because Bolshoi don't accept internationals. 
but there's no reason why they couldn't get into other companies, other international companies. And what do you hope? Do you hope that she comes back here and dances the Royal Ballet, or what would you like to see? Yeah, I'd, I just want my daughter to be happy, so uh, wherever she decides to be, then, then we'll go with it. I mean, after three years being away, I'm sure if she's in Germany or even America or somewhere, mm. you know, we can go visit and things like that. Yeah. You, you kind of acclimatise yourself, but wherever she's, wherever she's happy. Never easy, though, when you hear that your child is homesick. No. Not by telephone. You can't oh, give them no. a hug. Um, you've got a child crying at the other end, oh. saying, "You know, I'm really upset." And you, you just try to think of everything that comes into your head to, you know, comfort them. And you know, it's not enough. Do they look after them yes. well, though? I mean, do they make yes. them feel at home? Because you think, "Oh, going to Russia is going to be a bit yeah, sort of strict no. and sparse." No, Russians are lovely people. Yes, they they have this perception of it being very austere, but no, they're lovely. They look after you. If they feel that you've got any problems at all, they, they, they look after you and they take you to doctors. They make you sit out if they feel you've got any twinges. They don't push you to the extreme where you're in such pain that you can't even walk or anything. They're very caring people. Mm. Um, so you obviously miss her. How often does she come home and how often do you go out there? Well, I, I took her out there the first year. Um, obviously, it's quite expensive to go out visas and flights and everything. Um, they come home roughly three times during the term time. Um, okay. For a couple of days in November, maybe two weeks at Christmas. They're hoping to get a couple of days off soon. Um, otherwise, it's back for the summer. Mm, still, it's a high price to pay for having her away, but it is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we had to weigh up. Mm, right. We well, must be very proud. Thank you very I'm much. I'm proud of all of them. <laughs> and uh, wish her, obviously, Natalie, all Will the very do. best. Yes. Thanks Thank so you much. Very much. Thank you. The voices of siblings.